welcome. Today is a memorable day, but before I go any further, watch this. We're trying something new. This is called Mate Talk. Um, and uh, this is, the idea is I want to create something that's a little bit informal. I am a little bit nervous. I have to be completely honest here. Uh, I feel like I'm uh, navigating new waters. And I've had this in my brain for about six months now. And uh, since starting the channel, I've had a lot of people reach out to me, either through DMs, uh, YouTube. And I thought it would be cool to have a place where I can, I guess, have these answers. I look forward to your comments. Let me know if this is a good idea or if I am wasting my time. And I look back on the reason for this is really a chance to connect in a different kind of way. And so maybe this could work, maybe it doesn't. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this out for four weeks. Mate talk, over. I genuinely thought that the most that I would get out of mate talk was going to be four. And, and, and that was um, me being conservative. In my heart, I wish that I could get 10. I remember at the time I said to Kevin, if I can squeeze 10 of these, that would be so cool. Baby, 100, 100. So um, this, the bottom line is that it's because you guys are supporting it. So if I look at every week as, I, as a mate talk comes out, the engagement, the conversation, the, uh, the views, all of that is so positive and it's all because you guys are enjoying it this uh, this form of content so i want to thank you all i want to thank you for your support uh i was going to give it up to 10 and then if you know it was like you know four people watching uh then you know it was going to go but it's it's so awesome so thank you guys and thank you also in particular for your comments because when when i first started this it was really about instant engagement it's about it was about connecting with everybody um, quickly because as, as you've discovered with the um, episodes that I do that some of them take a long time I mean Sadanasa took me three to four months to bring to life only because I wanted to really experience that that fragrance and and anyway so week on week this I'm so so happy now boom bada bing let's move let's move straight into it for those who may have missed the um, the episode that I did last week on blind body. This is Sparta! I am a Spartan. Um, it's not a title that I really want constantly. I'm happy to do it, you know, I'm happy to take that title once a year. Uh, so I actually blind bought this and now have been testing. So I've done things in reverse to the way I like to personally do it. And I have to say that, okay, so in blind buying, it's always scary because what's going to happen? Who knows? Other than you're going to spend some money. I mean, that part, you, that, that part is guaranteed, but is it going to actually hit the mark is the question. At first, and you, for those who saw the episode, you could see both Sandra and I were going, mm, 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 is it the right thing? And, and look, I have to say also in that moment, there is a little bit of sort of sweat sort of nervous energy on my part because I'm literally flying blind knowing that all the cameras are recording as we're moving through. So I have to be careful not to, um, yeah, well, just be careful what I'm saying, you know, am, am I saying, like I'm, I'm saying notes and I'm like, I'm hoping that these notes were actually present in the fragrance. To wrap it up really easily, this is an incredible fragrance if you love white florals so it does celebrate white florals really well but it's not a uh, and i mentioned in the video it's a summer fragrance i've discovered it is not a summer fragrance so this is more a beautiful spring uh, fall or autumn uh, going out evening fragrance i've been wearing it well, since i got it i was wearing it three to four days consecutive I have fallen in love. So this is not one that you instantly fall in love with. Recently, I purchased Sketchbook P33 and I had it on the, on the counter at home. My son came up, sprayed it, and he, his first response, I mean, he barely hit his skin. So it just began to emerge out of the, the bottle. And he's like, oh my gosh. And he was just, things he was saying was quite comical actually, because he was just expressing his pure love for, the, for, for that particular fragrance and for Zerjoff in particular. Now he did spray this and he's like, okay, yes, okay. So he was like, not so sure that, you know, those expressions of love that were 
uh, very prevalent when it comes to P33 weren't present when it comes to comes to this. Anyway, three or four days later, I says, "What do you what do you, so what do you think of Torino 23?" And he's like, "At he goes, you know, it's funny because I, not that I don't like it, it's just that it didn't grab me straight away." But he goes, "But more and more as I've been wearing it," and he goes, "The other day I took off my my shirt, and I smelt you know the clothing, and he's like, mm, what's that?'" And then he remembered that he had sprayed. Torino 23, and he's like, I actually like this a lot. So this is a slow burn, all right? It's not one in normal Zurjo style where you come out of the gate just full and in absolute love. However, in time, as you begin to experience it, it's absolutely glorious. Someone uh, recently wrote that it's a perfect fragrance. This is like an opera. This is like a grand, uh, a fragrance that you wear to a grand event. So it could be a dinner or something, something spectacular, something that needs a regal, a, a regal occasion. I think that's what they said. And I would have to absolutely agree. I found that I, walking around in the streets um, with, uh, with Sandra, and I, I think on one particular day, I sprayed only twice. And the sillage, projection, the, the, the volume that this fragrance has was phenomenal. So those who are interested, Torino 23, I think it's a beautiful inclusion to that Torino lineup, but very different. Don't compare it to, to uh, 21 or 22. This is its own person. This is its own um, own fragrance. And uh, yeah, but, but if you like white florals, amazing. If you don't like white florals, I really wouldn't go down that path. But uh, boom, there it is. I'm gonna have a small drink. It's my hun drift episode. I thought I thought I could only do 20. I keep saying the same. 10. I thought 10. 100 baby i mean that's a that's an effort that's an effort but again thank you because without an audience i'd just be talking to myself myself and sandra sandra always loves watching the monkey talks all right let me um boom 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 move on so i was talking about zerjoff now for those again who saw that episode with uh, the blind buyer you saw that there were other uh, zerjoffs in that box my financier is the bestest person in the world she's given me a beautiful budget and when I say beautiful, as in substantial, um, I've been investing quite heavily on all things Zerjoff. Uh, have a look at this. So this is my top 10 for this period. So YouTube always measures things in uh, 28 days. Now, this is consistent. So if you look at these particular uh, productions here, they've been there for quite some time. Um, they are always in my uh, top 10, always. No matter what period I'm in, these guys are always in my top 10. The moment I put an episode out with the words Zerjoff, boom, it, it actually just takes off. So I'm doubling down. I'm telling you, baby, you always double down. And I am I'm going into this area with a lot more energy. So if you like all things Zerjoff, like I do, then uh, look out in the coming weeks. There's going to be a lot of content all surrounding uh, different Zerjoffs, different lineups. Uh, different breakdowns, etc., etc. Now, if you're planning to buy a Zerjoff, and if you're an Australian, just hang tight because the beautiful people of Libertine Perfumery, I have a really beautiful relationship with those guys. We've actually created a number of different um, content. Uh, one of them is actually, so, side note here, uh, one of them is that we've developed a number of master classes so you can actually watch these at your leisure. You'll get the samples, all those great things that the, those who are familiar with the masterclass at Liberty do. The difference is myself and Michael, we pre-recorded this. This is um, now a beautiful production uh, that's been created. It's been great. It's been a great success that we've actually creating uh, some additional um, uh, episodes. So four more are about to pop. Uh, Amouage, BDK, Santa Maria Novella, and one more, this one. Now, the, um, as I mentioned, I, 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 I pitched to uh, the beautiful people of Libertine. I said, look, we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do another lineup, yada, yada. Would you be kind enough to gift me a free bottle of uh, Erba Gold? And they said, yes. That's how beautiful these people are. So in two weeks time, I'm releasing a new episode, a lineup of seven uh, new fragrances. So I've done a part one, part two, part three is in production uh, so that's coming out uh, in not this week but the following week and linked to that particular production for Australians will be a NFC 
Zerjuf code. Don't try to use it now, it's not gonna work. But on the 10th, um, I think the 10th is the date, and this is the date, the video will pop and then the promotion will commence. If you buy a Zerjoff from the Libertine store, um, I think it's online only, because obviously online only, because you can't walk into the store and go, here's my code. Uh, so you'll be, you'll go into the draw to win that Erba Gold, brand new, just for you. Bada bing, okay, let me move on. All right, now let me flip, boom, and we commence announcements. KM Tours, we just launched officially, so we've been talking about KM Tours, Kevin and I, uh, but we've done the official launch, our new website, with all the extra tours that are on there. You may have seen, for those who checked out the website, that we're doing a tour in Milan next year and also in Dubai next year. One is in March to coincide with Exxon, the other one will be in October. Now, if you are interested, uh, uh, put your name on that VIP hot list. So you'll see if you go onto that page, you'll see that there's a chance to put your email there. The idea behind that is that as we draw closer, we're in conversation with a number of different brands right now. And as we sort of bring shape to this particular tour, we will email you a, um, an offer just for you guys on that hot list. All right. So if you want to know more, put your, your name on that hot list. Right now, we are promoting, obviously, the tour that's happening in France in September this year. If you're interested in that, jump on the website, have a look at all the details there. In uh, two weeks' time, Kevin and I will be filming the full breakdown. If you noticed on that top 10, uh, the promo video that we created to promote KM is running at third position, so awesome. We're getting a lot of uh, traction and airplay on that, so if you love perfumery, if you love luxury, if you love travel, jump on the website, have a look at what we're doing here. This is very exciting. Have a look at this video. You'll get a full um, understanding of the motivation behind what we're, what we're building. Um, the other announcement that I'd like to share is that we are doing for Aussies, um, we're doing a meetup at the Oligarch store on the 9th, actually just in case, on this date. Uh, so if you're able to come to the Oligarch store in Melbourne, come along, it'll be an awesome event. Uh, I'll look forward to seeing everybody there. I will be bringing, I've already had a few people ask me for, to, uh, to bring uh, Torino 23, it will be there, so you guys can test it out and see for yourself what your thoughts are on it. Boom. Now, there you go, boom. Announcement's done, how, good, how, how easy was that? I'm moving on because, baby, I got perfumes here that I wanna tell you about and they're awesome, okay. We did something, um, for me at least, momentous, an NFC Live. This is something that I've been wanting to do for a very long time. There's uh, an awesome um, a gentleman from Canada, his name is Nima. I jumped on a live with him a little while back and uh, I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed the, the, the ability to instantly uh, connect with everybody, or in this case, I was connecting with his his fans and the people that are following him. Uh, check out his, um, his channel, he's an awesome young man. He does a lot of lives, so he's like a, he's like the, uh, like a gangster. He's, he's a, a five-star veteran to my new recruit when it comes to this area. Um, but it was, a, so going back, I, I, I had that experience and I thought, you know what, I wanna do this for, the, for, uh, for my NFC uh, peoples. And uh, we launched the first one on Monday. I was super nervous, as um, according to my wife, I was hypo um, afterwards, because I, I think just the adrenaline from all that activity and will it go well, and, and yes, it, it actually was quite a success. Now that we had two members who um, presented during that NFC Live, and that's something, I, it was an idea that I had and it actually worked really well, and that was that I love exploring and finding new things, and I love listening to others and find out what they're actually discovering from themselves. So we had one gentleman by the name of Max, he's got his own Instagram account. He's always hunting, scouting for new, unique niche. So if you wanna check out some stuff that doesn't really, it doesn't ping on people's radars, uh, have a look at Max's account. He's always on the hunt for awesome new fragrances. And he spoke about a number of fragrances from him. In particular, the one that really pinged as he was telling me about it was uh, Kakesh, Kakesh, Kakesh. Anyway, this, this brand right here. So, um, Havana Paradise. That sounded like something that I need to find out about. Uh, but anyway, so Max talked about that. And then the other gentleman was from the US. 
and that's Mike. And he spoke, and I did not know this. I almost felt embarrassed. I love all things Paris Monte Carlo. And he mentioned that Paris has launched a new one called Paris Portofino. Bop. I did not know about this. I, like I said, I was embarrassed. So thank you again, Max and Mike, for sharing all this, uh, some new fragrances that are, that are out there for us to explore. The next um, NFC Live will be on March the 25th. If you're a member of the channel, I'd love to have two members reach out to me. And if you would like to present and be spotlighted and have a center stage for you to share about stuff that you're enjoying, DM me and we will talk about it. But for now, check this out. All right, we've got to get this going. So check it out. So I talk about members. You can become a member of the channel, uh, it's $4 a month, so very, very cost effective. And if you become a member, other than, you know, you could be spotlighted if you want to on an NFC Live, you get to join this. Look at this, it has exploded. Over the, car, over the past uh, week, um, there's been a massive influx of new members coming on board. So I wanna thank you all for supporting the channel. It's a, it's a great support for me. And also, more importantly, I get to do this. I, you have no idea how much fun I have in um, curating fragrances to send across to you guys. So this is the let me send you something. So members who are or people who are part of the channel or members of the channel get to be put onto this wheel. I will now. There are going to be two spins today because it is my 100th Mate Talk. Uh, the first person to spin, you have a choice between. Stefan Umbert Luca, Mortal Skin, or Ex Nilo's Gold Immortal. Both of these are beautiful fragrances. I think that this is seven mils, this is 10 mils. If I had a choice, it would be this one. Uh, I mean, not that I don't like this one, but I, I love this one. Uh, so these are the two that are up for grabs. And then tell me other fragrances that you love, and I'll put in some extra samples in there based on what you enjoy. But first, two spins, first person, good luck. No way, <laughs> Jay Bra. I'm gonna spin again because Jay Bra, I still owe you from last week. All right, so you're out there, Jay Bra. You are a member of the channel, which is awesome. Um, so I'm gonna spin again. If that's all right, Jay Bra. It, look, if you have a problem with that, then DM me and we will resolve it. All right, but I promise that you will not be. Uh, disadvantage, you will be rewarded, I promise. All right, so I'm gonna spin again, so we're still live for two more, okay? Jay Bra, DM me, I promise you'll get something special. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take care of you, I'll take care of you. Well, as in, I'll send you something cool. Good luck. Isabella. Isabella is a new member of the channel. Congratulations to you. DM me. We're spinning again. Uh, and now find out who the second. So if you are um, not connected with me on Instagram, here's the handle. Send me a message. Thomas. I think Thomas is also new to the channel. So congratulations to both you guys. Now, I mentioned last week that we're doing three spins. Why are we doing three spins? Because it's my 100th. All right, so here it is. It's my 100th episode. These are the OGs. Look at these beautiful people. Forget about it. These guys have been, so what happens is as soon as you become a member, you get a, a, like a yellow um, icon. And then once you hit a six month, your icon changes to red, I think. Have a look here. And then it migrates to yellow again, but this time with a red star. Bada bing. All right, so these are the OGs. And I say thank you to each one of you guys for Supporting the channel for this long. Now, OGs are gonna get the Unuit Nomad. I'll send it out to you anywhere in the world. <laughs> Sean. Oh, oh, we're gonna stop. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Yikes. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. All right, we'll stop that. Sean. All right, you know what? Sean, DM me. I'll send you something because that, that's twice now. Twice, they, it's just like up and uh, you've missed out. So we, we can't have that, that's enough of that. 
So Sean, DM me and uh, I'll organize something. I'll send you a uh, Unuit Nomad gift set also. Why? Because it's my 100th. I'm allowed to do whatever I want because it's my 100th. All right, let me move on. Now, I had a, um, so anyway, congratulations to everybody who just, uh, who just um, won. Um, that's pretty awesome. Um, I look forward to, and again, by becoming a member gives me a chance to have a little bit of fun and uh, do some, some um, send some stuff out to everybody else. Okay, bada bing, here we go. So now, last week, uh, Gus, who is an Argentinian, if I'm not mistaken, Gus, I, 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 you, I feel that you're an Argentinian, maybe I could be wrong, but I believe you're based in Miami, and uh, we, um, you know, we, we talk quite often, and he recently wrote on the, um, on the last episode that being that it's my 100th, I should do a mate lineup. Fragrances that have the note of mate. And I thought, that's pretty cool. I do have probably about three or four fragrances with mate in it, but I'm like, I only have three or four. And then I had the idea to, why don't I do it on the Argentinian house that I love, which is Fuea 1833. So today I'm going to give you, now this was hard. Can I just give you a heads up? This was very hard. Now, before I go any further, I'm gonna stop rolling. I'll be right back in two seconds. All right, so I'm gonna talk about Fuea 1833, an Argentinian house that I absolutely adore. And um, I've got a fairly vast collection. I've been sort of collecting very slowly on these guys here, only because I really love the way that they construct fragrances. Uh, they're super unique. I mean, talking super unique to the point, which is quite f funny, I think, that when people first experience these fragrances, they're like, nah, no, I don't like them. Um, I, and I had that in person. So I was in the Milan boutique. I uh, had some, uh, some uh, subscribers or some people that I'd been in contact with uh, connected to the channel. And um, we met at the boutique of the Foyer boutique and they were like, nah, it's not so much for me before walking in, nah, not so much for me. And I'm like, okay, let, let me walk you through the rhythm of how this thing works. Let me, I've got this, and this actually, this is impromptu. So this is the actual, I don't know if you can see that. So that's the way, so this is the actual boutique itself. Actually, can you see all those crosses? That's all the, <laughs> uh, so they've got a vast collection. And what I've lined up for you here is if you're brand new to Fuea, if you're not sure where to start, let me give you some guidance here. Um, so let me give you a little bit of background. For, and just so one last thing, I am gonna do a full episode, similar to what I've done with uh, like Zurich and things like that. I'm gonna do a lineup production on these guys and give you also a breakup as to you know who are they what they do uh, why are they so unique why should you why should they be on your radar sort of thing uh, but I'll, I'll do more detail on that to commence just quickly argentinian brand as i mentioned the owner his name is julian badel he is um he's an artist in his soul the, the core of him is that he's very artistic he, he makes guitars um, he loves chemistry and he's self-taught. So all the fragrances are created by Julian Badel. Uh, so he, um, he, he is a self-taught perfumer, essentially. Um, the other thing too is that he, he's, a, he's a naturalist. He loves all things to do connected to nature. So a lot of the fragrances, some of the ingredients that he actually captures are from Patagonia and from the more remote parts of Argentina. There are some fragrances, and I'll, I'll talk about one in particular that uses a note that is very native to Argentina, so and that's in the South American region. So, uh, as a as a unique and as an exciting house, uh, and as a as a, a perfume house that that is just just so different to anything else you've had. I mean, at the end of the day, the the, the ingredients are similar, meaning that the you know uses rose or jasmine, blah 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 but it's the construction, it's the composition, it's now the architecture is also a little bit different. And this is the last thing I wanna say before I jump in, that you normally see the, the, the pyramid architecture and, and a lot of perfumers like to express themselves in that pyramid, opening base, oh, sorry, opening heart and base notes. He wants to interpret in a different way and he has more of a, like a planetary system. So if you look at his website, here's, a, here's an example of what it looks like. Um, and he has the central note, call it the sun or his core note, and then these other orbiting notes around it. Now, 
being that it's it's all chemistry and uh, they're all molecules, they're not following whatever he he designs here. He's not you know they're not sort of obeying that. However, what he's trying to show or demonstrate is that the central theme is what this this fragrance is about, but it's being supported with these these two other primary notes. Now there's other ingredients in there. Okay, so just you know there's not just three ingredients in each of these fragrances, but these are the three primary core. Uh, notes that are very dominant. So if you don't like any three of these, then you're not going to like the fragrance as a whole because all the others are supporting that structure. Boom. I can just see my hands doing everything. <laughs> uh, such an Italian. Italian Argentinians were all like, bop, boop, boop, beep, boop, boom. We're always moving our hands around like crazy. All right. So let me begin. Okay, last, sorry, last one, last one. Um, Sandra. So I mentioned earlier that um, some people don't like the house when they first get introduced to it because it, it is very different. They're not, I mean, it's, it's not like a Naso Mato or Orto Parisi, which are purposely trying to destabilize you in its composition. The difference here is that, and Sandra calls it her big girl fragrance, meaning that she feels she feels grown up, you know, where some of the fragrances you spray and you're like, oh, this is beautiful, this is nice. And no matter where you are on your niche journey, you would appreciate. Whereas these ones here, when she falls in love, and she's, she's got a number of these that she absolutely loves. When she falls in love, she's like, oh, I feel like, she, it's almost like she's graduating, you know, and she feels excited by the fact that she begins to enjoy and appreciate the beauty that stands behind these fragrances. Okay, I'm, I think you know I love this house. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gushing with, the, with, um, with love for it. But let me begin here. So this is now uh, two, four, six, seven fragrances. <laughs> It'll be in the thumbnail, but I, I just had to count it. Um, seven fragrances that I love and seven fragrances that I would like to put on your radar if you want to go out and hunt them down. The first one is, and in celebration to my 100th episode, it's gonna get, you guys are gonna get sick of that. You're like, yeah, we get it, it was 100. I thought I was only gonna do 10. Anyway, um, my 100, sorry, no, in celebration of my 100, mate. So it has to have something to do with mate. Those who are not familiar, I am, Ar soy argentino, I'm from Argentina, I was born in Argentina. Uh, mate is part of our culture. Uh, mate is the, uh, the South American drink for strength, vitality, virality, virality, anyway, but just for, for all things good. And this fragrance here is called Taze, Taze, Taze. And it includes a mate flower. Now, interestingly, I never smelt a mate flower. I know what the, the profile to mate is, which is green. Uh, uh, not, I was gonna say sour, but it's bitter. It, it's green, it's, it's wood-like, depending on the type of mate that you buy. Uh, there's a, sometimes there's a smokiness to it. This fragrance here celebrates that green, vibrant bitterness that, it, that exists within that, that composition. The core note here is osmanthus. And interestingly, sometimes osmanthus can be um, almost apricot fruit-like. There is a floral component to it. There's also an animalic component to it, depending, I mean, I've had a number of perfumers talk about that the osmanthus, um, absolutely, the osmanthus uh, ingredient can be very chameleon-like, you know, depending how, you know, you want to use it. In this case here, it has components of the fruitiness of it, but then it has the two supporting notes is green tea and the mate flower. And what it does is it tempers that fruitiness. This is vibrant, this is, uh, it is green. There is an aromatic component to it. I am wearing it today, excuse me. The, the, but the fruitiness is there. You just, the, the, this is a summer, spring, autumn fragrance. I wouldn't, this, uh, this is not one that I would wear for winter, but on a summery day like it is today here in Melbourne, it's just, it's glorious. It just sings so beautifully. This is instant love, everybody. If you're not sure, um, if you like uh, vibrant, uh, aromatic, bright, happy fragrances uh, with a touch of green to it, then Taze is absolutely glorious. So a big recommendation on that. Um, there is a bit in this there. I'm just making sure that I've covered my core points. Yeah, so anyway, glorious fragrance. I absolutely love it. And the next one is, we're going to move across to more of a uh rose but we're gonna stay a little bit in that fruity sort of realm okay now rose sometimes can be perceived as uh, a fragrance or a fragrance note more 
sort of leaning towards a, a woman, feminine. Um, it's true, there's a lot of rose notes in female perfumery. So ladies, if, you're in, if you would like a very modern, uh, 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 modern bright rose, then Juan Manuel is gorgeous. For those who like radical rose, this is an awesome companion. Not the same, so very different. This one here, in my opinion, is slightly brighter, a little bit more on the green side of things. So its core note here is the rose and it's supported by geranium and pink pepper. And I find that the pink pepper almost has a brightness to it. It has a fruit-like component to it, but it doesn't go, see, I like radical rose can be almost to the point of being um, in the realm of raspberry-like. It has a really beautiful fruity sweetness. This doesn't go to that realm. It's, it's tempered by, I'm gonna say by the geranium, so it keeps that greenness but that rose is still very prevalent. I've got it here. It's almost like, it almost has like a caramel, not caramel, but that the rose is unique here. So the rose has a, it, there is a sweet, anyway, it's just gorgeous. I mean, I'm trying to define it, but my brain's going, I, you know, I haven't really sort of broken down. It's just beautiful. All right, so this is one. I also love showing this fragrance off. Um, my whole family, including my nieces and nephews, are all into fragrances. This is my, I think he's eight, eight-year-old, yeah, eight-year-old nephew. He is, he's got such an incredible nose, this boy. He's, he's into perfume so deeply. Anyway, I sprayed this on him and his eyes lit up. He was just like, you know, it was almost like, I think the equivalent would be like uh, something yummy, something divine, and you're like, oh my gosh, it's, his eyes lit up. Recently, I had my two nieces, they're much older now, they're uh, early 20s, and I, and I said, let me show you a beautiful rose. And sometimes, and this is what also happens, people go, rose, no, 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 you know, that's like a, that's, a, that's um, an old person smell. Both of them also absolutely adored. They actually did the yummy. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful, this is yummy. So it does have a beautiful, not gourmand, it's not a gourmand fragrance, but it does have a beautiful sweetness in there. It is very, it, it, it's it's not Moorish, but it does draw you in. It, it has this beautiful attraction to it. So Juan Manuel, if you like, boys, if you're not sure about a beautiful rose, Juan Manuel, I'm gonna tell you instant love. You're, you're gonna absolutely adore that one. Boom, actually I just wrote there, the person who introduced this to me was none other but the great Michael Marzano. Here's the video that we did together. Um, this is where he demonstrated the, and actually he explains it in a lot more depth. So if you want to know more about Juan Manuel, check out that particular video. The next one is La Cautiva. This is Sandra's first love. All right. So when we were in Milan, I walked into the I walked into the, the the foyer boutique like 15 million times. I mean, they knew my name, I and mean, that's not an exaggeration. Oh, hi, Marcelo. Hola, Marcelo. Uh, so they got to know me quite well. It, if, if you are in Milan, go to the boutique. This boutique is like nothing else. It's almost like a, a place to, to zen yourself. I mean, the, the, the wood, the mahogany that's all around, there's a calmness, then the smell of perfumes. Um, anyway, just you need to check out this, this venue. Uh, La Captiva. Now, what it does, this is now, Sandra's watching this video, I know it. And the funniest thing about this is that this is all the things that Sandra doesn't like. So she, so I purposely don't tell her certain notes because then she, then she, like the inception of it, she's unsure about the fragrance. The central note to this fragrance here is vanilla. Sandra's not a fan of vanilla. When, even the slightest hint of vanilla, she's like, well, I'm not sure. So the central theme, but it's a vanilla flower. So it's not a gourmand. It does have touches of gourmand, but it's not a gourmand fragrance, not to my opinion. So this one here, it uses vanilla, or fl the vanilla flower as its central theme. And then surrounding that is black currant and, I forgot, boop, boop, beep, 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 rose. You would not know that it has the rose other than on the dry down you are getting a floral component coming through on the opening that black currant the fruitiness of the black currant mixed in with that vanilla flower or the floral components begin to emerge the difference is it does have animalic tones to it i recently sprayed this on my sister of oh my sister on my daughter i recently sprayed this on my daughter madison interesting that's said sister yeah anyway 
Um, and her first response was, mm, I don't like leather. And I'm like, there's no leather in here. And she's like, oh, I'm getting like leather. And so what it is, I feel, is that that has some small touches of animalic components to it. Now, where is that coming from? I don't know. It could be that vanilla flower. Uh, the vanilla flower is an orchid. Uh, so maybe there's something that is coming from that. So again, it's not the vanilla bean, so it's not a gourmand a vanilla scent that it has. It's, it is a little bit more on the animalic component of it. Um, gorgeous. The, the La Captiva, so this is, a lot of people actually are, have this on their radar. It's one of the more popular ones within the foyer. If you do like a floral, uh, but not overtly floral, a fragrance, then this works perfectly. Easy on a man, very easy on a woman to wear too. Not one that I wear as often because Sandra, this is her fragrance, I smell this and for me, I, I can imagine a picture Sandra uh, walking into the room. So, but anyway, gorgeous fragrance for both men and women. Love it a lot. Let me just make sure, boom, let me take a small drink. Can I please have a small drink? Boom, 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 where are we going? Interesting that I wrote, my last one on that page when it should be on this page. Let me just take a small drink. Yes, please, okay. All right. So I mentioned before, this was the first one, La Captiva is the first one that Sandra fell in love with. Um, the first one that I fell in love with, and again, Michael Marzano was my guy, uh, or my pusher. <laughs> um, this is La Biblioteca de Babel, which means the, the Library of Babel. It's a short story that was written by an Argentinian author about a monkey. This was written back in the 1940s, 1950s, about a monkey who owned a library. And if anything, if you read that short story, it's almost like a precursor to the internet because the monkey had all the information, but being a monkey, didn't know how to properly decipher this info and was feeding information in a unusual way to people. So I'm like, sometimes I think with the algorithm, yeah, anyway, no, we're not gonna go into that. So La Biblioteca de Babel is really an expression about walking into an old library. So think about um, something that was built, I don't know, maybe in the 1800s, and you, you're, it's dark wood, you're smelling the, the books, you're smelling the, the leather, you're smelling the, the wood paneling. Now, for those who haven't have a chance or had a chance or might be able to walk into a library like that, think of a sauna. So for me, this is like walking into a, like those classic saunas. You can smell the wood. You almost smell the, the heaviness of the, the wood in the air. Um, so it, this fragrance is incredible. Now, I love, of course, I was gonna say, of course, but I, as a man, I love woody fragrances. I love things that have that woody component to it, that aromatics or so dry woods, mossy woods, aromatics, I love all that stuff. And this one here celebrates that in such a spectacular way. Now, interestingly, it uses, let me tell you because, gab, gab, reuva. So it's central, uh, note is a wood called cabre uva and I'm like what is that I mean so in doing some investigation cabre uva is an Argentinian uh, wood that's found locally uh, then it uses another wood I can't pronounce it so it's right here and finally it uses a cinnamon bark so you can see that it has this very deep woody component to it that cinnamon bark Unlike a gourmand fragrance where you're getting the, I guess the, the, the cinnamon cooking component of it, the bark keeps it within that woody realm. This is, as I said, it's like walking into a beautiful sauna that has been, that's been on, the, there's the, the, the humid, the, the, yeah, the heat is in this, this place because it does emanate this woody, spicy, very deep, it's very meditative as a fragrance. This is an all year round. So you could wear it in high summer, so deep summer, this is just glorious. And then in winter, it's absolutely spectacular. Um, if some notes that you can compare, so think cypress, think of mahogany, uh, think of a cedar, that's all of its characteristics. But now with that cinnamon bark and that creates that spiciness in the actual fragrance, this is honestly, like I said, for me, my first love, 
very first one that I walked into when I smelled this, I'd never smelled anything so beautifully complex as this guy here. And that was it. This was my, this was my gateway into this whole, uh, into this whole collection. I'm in the dry down here. The, I love the opening. The opening has, as I said, almost has a, a heat that emanates from it. The dry down, it's still very deep, very woody. The spiciness is in there. There's other notes obviously are, are emerging because I almost feel like there's a, like a cardamom or something else, another spice that's also cooking in there. But just glorious. Uh, beautiful, beautiful fragrance. All right, boom, bing, boom. And let me see what else have I got. All right, so if you like your woody, uh, almost just very um, meditative, grounding fragrances, then this next one is glorious. I mean, I, I love uh, La Biblioteca, but this is a, a, a new inclusion in the, in the collection. It's called Los Humos Sagrado, and it's all about those sacred woods or those sacred um, ingredients that were used by shame, uh, sh shamans, 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 witch doctors, uh, by used by those uh, uh, individuals who would would burn, so like the priests and things like that, would burn certain ingredients to either. Uh, scare away evil spirits or to invite the gods into their lives or into the things that they were doing. The three core ingredients here. The central one is Palo Santo. So guayac wood or sacred wood is the direct translation to that. Palo Santo is the core. And the two other supporting notes is oud and then sage. Now all three of these are linked to some form of um, uh, some form of uh, honoring or sacredness. There's, there's something in each one of those ingredients that is connected to, I guess, our soul. You know, it's connected to uh, the universe. It's connected to something greater. The three of these together create the most spectacular. And you know what? If you're new to oud, this is a great place to begin because the oud note does not dominate. If anything, if the only, so for me, on the opening, the sage and oud are pretty much in, um, not fighting, but they're sort of working together. You know, you, you, you're getting that, the, the, the herbal component of the sage, but you're also getting that, the animalic element of the oud, but all of it is anchored with the woodiness of the Palo Santo. I'm in the dry down now. It, there is a sweetness in there. I have no idea where this would be allocated to or what is creating that sweetness, but it could be the Palo Santo that there is a, a sweeter component to it. But it is a very meditative, sort of deep grounding fragrance. Where Biblioteca has a spiciness, and as I said, I think there's a something else going in there, like a cardamom. So it has this like this um, a lot brighter in its or a lot more aromatic in its profile uh, los humos sagrado is much deeper a lot more resinous but glorious um, this one here i didn't wear i think i wore it on high heat didn't work so well so it, it was uh it was too heavy um so more of a uh, cooler wet autumn so autumn spring this would be magic um uh, autumn fall, sorry, autumn fall, would, this would be magic as a winter fragrance. Forget about it. Absolutely glorious. All right, two more. I'm getting tired. I need a drink. Mm. I'm hoping, sorry, I, I should have just limited to six, but I, I had more. I had to push them away. So I will do this episode where I will go into complete breakdown. And I feel like I am rushing like crazy. But anyway, wrapping this baby up. The, the second last one. Uh, this is Sandra's favorite, or has become Sandra's favorite. It's called Tagore. Um, interestingly, it has very similar ingredients to uh, Gentle Fluidity Silver. Now, Gentle Fluidity Silver is very, I guess, masculine leaning. It has those aromatics, it has the, um, I wrote it down here, aromatic, it's spicy, it has herbal components to it. Sandra absolutely adores wearing this. Now, the central theme to this is an ambrette, which is a floral amber. The ambrette does have a little bit of a fruity component to it, like a pear-like element to it. So it, does, it doesn't go into this very heavy, woody, spicy component, um, unlike uh, Gentle Fluidity, which is great for as a, as a masculine fragrance. Mind you, this is, I bought this for me. So this is an incredible, vibrant, um, 
uh, aromatic woody style fragrance with a spicy component to it. There's also cardamom and coriander. They're the two other supporting ingredients. But it's that ambre. So again, this, it's just this beautiful balance. That, I mean, I'm smelling it there. This is a summer fragrance. This is brightness. This is absolute happiness, which works beautifully in winter too. If you're having, if it's a cool day, a cold day, if it's miserable outside, if you're not having a great day, Tagore can bring brightness into your life. As I mentioned, oh, it is gorgeous. As I mentioned, Sandra's favorite fragrance, I can smell this, and on her, it smells different. There is, for me, I get a lot more of the spicy component, the cardamom really pops on me. For her, I don't get that, that high level of cardamom from her. I think the ambrette plays a much stronger um, on her. Uh, so that musky, sort of slightly fruity components to it really begin to emanate. The sillage on this is spectacular. The longevity is fantastic. As I, as I said, on a summery day, wearing this, sweating it up is amazing. I'm gonna, one more. I'm gonna take a small, small drink. And the last one. Choco. I always say this wrong. Choco Atol. Choco Atol. It's the, it's the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was the Aztec word for chocolate. So choco ato, this is how you pronounce, this is how you spell it. Um, even though I love all of them equally, I adore this one. So this is one, if you like boozy gourmand fragrances, if you like uh, sort of dark fruits, um, chocolatey touch to it, but not heavily gourmand. So there's not a deep sweetness in this. Um, it does, not that it goes bitter or stays bitter, but it has a rum-like quality. So if it has this booziness in there. The core theme to this is the uh, chocolate, the cacao flower. Then it, uh, the other surrounding notes is rum. And the last one is, so it's rum, chocolate, vanilla. It is incredible. As a, mm, baby, what's your name kind of fragrance, this just, I'm telling you, you I wore it again recently, well, I wore it, not again, but I wore it recently. Um, I stepped out of the house and Nelson, and he was a ways away. I'm talking like five, 10 meters, all right, from the, and he instantly perked up because uh, he was putting his children into the car. And he's like, oh my goodness. He's like, what, who, who is that? And, and of course I'm walking out with, you know, my strut. Um, it's just divine, you know? So as a evening fragrance, as a first date, as a going out, as a make everybody fall in love with you, you know, in a radius of, you know, 10 meters, uh, this baby here is divine. I find that this fragrance here lasts on me for about five or six hours, so it doesn't have Awesome, um, a huge, I was gonna say awesome. It doesn't have huge longevity on it. However, as a date fragrance, so before you walk out the door um, and you put this baby on, it's just gorgeous. Now, that evening that we all went out, I was wearing it for about four to five hours. We got back into the car with Nelson. And he's like, I need to borrow that one. I need to, this one here, I need to put it on the library system. So it is absolutely spectacular. If you like boozy, if you like the more um, dark fruits, rum style uh, notes, touch of chocolate, chocolato, chocolate. <laughs> when I do the video, I promise that I'll say that properly. Boom, there it is. Finito la musica. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you again for the support. 100, I feel exhausted. I feel like I've run a marathon. Um, but uh, I'm sorry, I, I, I had a feeling this was gonna be a very long episode. So there are chapter markers all the way down um, across this video, so you can just jump around to where you wanna go. Thank you again, everyone, for your incredible support. I'll see you guys all on the next episode, 101. We start again, and we'll see how, um, we'll see how much longer this goes for. It would be nice if we can, anyway, it doesn't matter. Thank you, you guys are awesome. See you all on the next episode.